For more on this is Detroit's former police chief, James Craig. It's really good to have you, sir. Just want to play a soundbite from um, the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, um, because what Peter said is it will be interesting to see how much responsibility this current White House takes. I think this might give us an indication. Watch. There's been actually a rise in crime over the last five years, but really the last 18 months. Is that how you see it? You know, I don't know where she's going, Dana. Uh, she says 18 months, rising crime over five years. Where's she getting her data? It's the same thing she said. Uh, I don't know if it was the president or, or she said, we have a gun problem. No, we don't have a gun problem in the country. What we have is a criminal uh, problem, and we need to address that. You know, Dana, I just got to say this. Uh, I, I get that the president's coming out with the anti-crime strategy. Uh, you know, as a practitioner of 44 years, frankly, I don't think it's going to go far enough because he has still got to appease the progressive arm of his party, and doing that appeasing is not going to take uh, the crime effort to where it needs to go. Speaking I'm of, convinced of it. Speaking of a progressive point of view, take a listen to this contributor from MSNBC on what she thinks going on. There are a lot of police unions and GOP operatives that would like for us to believe that this recent crime wave has everything to do with this idea of defunding the police. This rising crime is not the fault of the movement. It's actually the fault of the police. Why should we keep funding systems and institutions that keep rendering themselves ineffective? Now, let me just show the audience here. This crime surges is not just in New York or Chicago. This is all across the country. You can see it here. Atlanta, Portland, Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, and Philadelphia, all up considerably. And yet the punishments, for example, here in New York, we found out that the prosecutor uh, just basically dropped half of the cases against anybody who was rioting or committing arson during the George Floyd pro protests. How does that affect police? You know, I got to tell you, first, let me address the comment of that progressive. First of all, it is not the fault of the police. The vast majority of men and women serve with distinction and honor. It's not their fault. It's everything else that's going on. What they conveniently leave out of the conversation is, let's talk about bail reform. Let's talk about what the courts are doing. Let's talk about how police officers have been demoralized. Let's talk about ending qualified immunity in New York and the reason why the attrition rate is so high. Yes, police officers do matter. And so, but when you don't charge people for committing crimes, what's the message? You are incentivizing criminal behavior because the criminals know one thing, no longer are there consequences. So that's the problem. It's not the police. We convene to leave other public servants out. We leave out the prosecutors. Let's talk about the prosecutor in LA County. Let's talk about the courts and this bail reform they are part of the system and certainly part of the issue. This is not about blaming the police. Can it's, I ask it's, you one thing, sir? Um, last hour we showed this horrific video of the couple in Chicago that was, after a fender bender, swarmed, pulled out of the car, both shot. The man has died, the wife's you know, fighting for her life. If you have people committing crimes like that over a fender bender, I mean, what should we do? Well, you know, again, you got a situation right now that uh, criminals are acting out and very aggressive. They're acting out aggressive towards police, towards our community, uh, in part, and I'm not going to say the entire reason, but, you know, we can say that the pandemic in some respects uh, has created a mental health crisis uh, by some. But I really believe we're not focusing on addressing these violent criminals who are in our community who are on tethers. Uh, look, I, I talked about the story of a sergeant who was killed by her estranged child's father, charged with second-degree premeditated murder. And because he didn't get a timely trial, he's now out. He's right. on tether. This is what's facing our cities across this country. It's a big issue. So uh, I'm interested in hearing the strategy uh, later today. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, if, if, if it falls short of changing the narrative of supporting these men and women the right way, if it, is, if it falls short yep. in addressing uh, bail reform and these other failed initiatives, it then won't be nothing's going to change. Well, we'll, uh, be, we'll be paying attention to it as, as well as you, and we'll be in touch with you to find out what you think about what the president has to say later on this. Thank you so much, sir. All right, Dan. Thank